Welcome to World Action and Reaction News, today's news headlines are. A MiG-23 trainer aircraft of the Indian Air Force on Thursday crashed in Rajasthan's Jodhpur district, with both the pilots ejecting safely. Jaipur, a MiG-23 trainer aircraft of the Indian Air Force on Thursday crashed in Rajasthan's Jodhpur district, with both the pilots ejecting safely. The incident occurred in Bailsar area, SP, Jodhpur Rural, Dr. Ravi said. It was a MiG-23 UB trainer plane and both the pilot and co-pilot are safe, defense source said. A court of inquiry has been ordered. Israel Aerospace Industries, IAI, which is to supply systems for barricade surface-to-air missiles to Bharat Electronics Ltd for installation on Indian warships, is looked to engage with START UPS that work in the field of aviation and defense. The decision has sparked interest among Indian conglomerates such as the Kalyani Group and Pyramal Enterprises. As Israel continues to produce an impressive number of highly successful tech START UPS earning it the moniker Startup Nation IAI is keen to build what is being referred to as the country's first aviation accelerator. The Bidek Aviation Group IAI's biggest division that conducts heavy aircraft maintenance and upgrades, and converts aircraft to various specified configurations such as aerial refueling and cargo, will host the accelerator. The aim is to identify start UPS that have passed the seed stage, so that their products can be used by IAI, said officials. The start UPS will utilize IAI's infrastructural facilities as well as professional guidance from leading aviation specialists. These are to be manufactured by an Indian firm in collaboration with a foreign firm. The moves comes after the Russian Kamov 226 t copter could not meet its requirements. With the Russian Kamov 226 t copter not meeting its requirements, the Navy is soon going to issue an expression of interest for procuring 110 light utility helicopters to be manufactured by an Indian firm in collaboration with a foreign firm. Kamov 226T helicopter has been chosen to be built in a joint venture between Russia and Indian Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, for supplying 200 copters to the Army and Air Force for similar requirements of replacing their vintage fleet of Cheetah and Cheetok copters. As the strategic partnership policy has been cleared by the government, an expression of interest would be issued to the Indian firms by the Defence Ministry in the next few weeks to buy 110 copters which would be under the Made in India project, government sources told Mail Today. Pakistan is closely watching Prime Minister Narendra Modi's historic trip to Israel as it can have serious implications on strategic stability in the region, a media report said on Wednesday. The Express Tribune reported that Pakistan officially does not comment on bilateral visits of other heads of governments and states, but it is closely following Modi's trip since it can have serious implications on strategic stability in the region. Israel has long been a major supplier of arms and other defense equipment to India and those deals have deliberately been kept secret by the two sides. However, the two countries are now more open and publicly talk about their deepening defense cooperation, the Daily said. India got access to some of the most modern defense technologies of America through Israel, Defense analyst L.T. Gen, R.E.T.D., Amjad Shoab was quoted as saying by the Daily. Gen Shoab said India had greatly benefited from the defense and military ties with Israel. Dr. Zafar Nawaz Jaspal, an international affairs expert, said growing defense cooperation between India and Israel would disturb strategic balance in the South Asian region. The Kuwait Azam University professor believes Israel assistance can propel India's missile program something that would undermine Pakistan's policy of maintaining credible deterrence, the Daily reported. One of the subjects on which the Indian media has created a lot of hype is the threat emanating from terrorism. It has worked hard to relate terrorism with Pakistan and blame it for virtually any terror incident occurring anywhere in India, the Daily said. Making it clear that it will not buckle under heated rhetoric from China. India said a diplomatic resolution resulting in a Chinese pullback from Bhutanese territory would resolve the current border standoff near the Sikkim Bhutan Tibet Tri Junction. This issue or tension should be resolved at the diplomatic level, it can be resolved diplomatically, which is what we want, 
said Minister of State for Defense Subash Bamra, speaking to journalists here on Wednesday. The Chinese troops should stay where they were earlier, they have entered Bhutan's territory, they should not intrude into Bhutanese territory. This is our security concern and this is our stand, he added. Pointing to Bhutan's recent statement, which held China accused of trying to unilaterally alter the status quo by constructing a road inside Bhutanese territory in violation of all agreements, Bamra said, understand what Bhutan is saying. This tension can be resolved only at a diplomatic level, across the table, we can solve all the problems. This comes a day after the Chinese ambassador Luo Zhaowai, in an interview, added to the rhetoric from Beijing by ruling out a compromise in the ongoing troop face-off with India. He said the onus was on India to unconditionally pull back its troops to resolve the grave situation. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu wasn't doing a mere lip service when he said his country was keen to make with India. Tel Aviv, according to sources, has taken an unprecedented decision to assemble Israeli missiles in India. Among several agreements clinched by the nations on Wednesday, the most critical one was to establish a joint company between the Israeli aerospace industry and an Indian company, name not disclosed, to build and maintain missiles in India. The deal is pegged to be worth around $1 billion, while another $2 billion deal, led by Israeli defense major Rafael Advanced Defense Systems is likely to follow. This effectively means India and Israel will build a joint military industry. Both prime ministers repeatedly stressed partnership. So, what may begin as assembling of Israeli technology could soon, probably, develop into a joint industry, the sources added. Right now, most Israeli defense equipment are produced by factories in the U.S. Experts say Tel Aviv's decision could be perceived by the Trump administration which also has an America First policy as endangering its interest. Interestingly, earlier last month, U.S. defense major Lockheed Martin also agreed to produce F-16S in India, while Modi was on a visit to the U.S. On July 6, Modi will head straight to Hamburg for the G20 meet. There he will hold discussions about terrorism, global growth and trade, partnership with Africa, migration and health, women empowerment, sustainable development climate and energy etc. Along with Japan and South Korea, a dozen of nations will be presented at G20 summit. After this, a Western classical music concert is also organized for the leaders at Hamburg. PM Modi and Xi Jinping, Chinese Premier, will hold an informal meeting with the officials of BRICS, in order to break the ice between India and China. Even in SCO summit, held on June 9, both the premiers had a good meeting which was followed by PLA leaders along the borders of Sikkim and Bhutan. Russia is also keen for its contribution to the functioning of Sino-India relationship. After this unofficial meeting, an official BRICS summit will take place in September under Beijing presidency. This meet will be followed by annual NSA summit in which Ajit Doval will visit China as a special representative. A Malabar naval exercise will happen in the upcoming week. This is the first Indo-US military exercise which is happening after Donald Trump became US president. After G20 summit, a meeting will be held in China on 27 to 28 July which will include NSA officials. The perfume capital of India Kanawai known for its fragrances has now come up with a unique stink bomb, which might be used to control the errant stone pelting in Jammu and Kashmir and other regions. The scientists at Fragrance and Flavor Development Center, FFDC, located in Kanawai have made a unique stink bomb. This bomb is of size of a capsule and can be used instead of a pellet gun, also this foul smell bomb can be launched from the same gun which is used to fire tear gas shells. According to the scientists at FFDC, the smoke of this unique stink bomb will rise along with an unbearable stink, people will not be generally able to tolerate it. As per the scientists of FFDC, the smell of capsules is unbearable, but it has no ill effects on the health of the person. After the necessary clearances and approval of Defense Research and Development Organization and the Ministry of Defense, it will be handed over to the Army. Speaking to ETV, Shakti Vinay Shukla, Principal Director, 
FFDC said that this stink bomb has been prepared by filling the smelling chemicals in a small capsule. This will soon be tested in Gwalior Defense Laboratory. The Army could use it after the trials are done and are successful. The Ministry of Defense has approved its testing on the initiative of Union Minister Jiraraj Singh, he said. Russian and Indian military officials met Friday to prepare for the upcoming Indra 2017 drill that will bring together various types of armed forces for a joint exercise on land, in the air and at sea, according to the Russian Navy. Russian and Indian military officials met Friday to prepare for the upcoming Indra 2017 drill that will bring together various types of armed forces for a joint exercise on land, in the air and at sea, a Russian Navy spokesman said. Representatives of Russia and India discussed arrangements for joint international maneuvers, practical action scenarios for forces and the composition of troops and equipment, Vladimir Matveyev, spokesman for the Russian Eastern Military District's Pacific Fleet said. The parties signed a protocol of the second conference convened in preparation for the war games, which were announced this June by Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu. The exercise to improve coordination is scheduled for this fall. Last year's edition of the maneuvers in Russia's easternmost Primorsky region consisted of separate naval, air and anti-terror exercises. Thanks for watching. I hope you like this news. Please share your views in comment box. Please like and share this video. Press subscribe button and bell for auto update to you regarding my channel world action and reaction news, warn.